Okay, let's look at the steps in the admission process. First, the review of applications. Um, standardized applications uh, are prepared by the uh, American Medical College Application Service, uh, MCAS, and most US medical schools, including ours, use those. And then we request supplemental material, essays. We want to know what you think about yourself and about medicine and your career. And that's an entirely appropriate thing. You have to be articulate. In order to provide good health care, you have to be able to communicate extremely well. And we find people who are extraordinarily bright, particularly in science, who don't make good doctors or want to make good doctors because they can't communicate with patients. So we want to know that you can communicate. Response to specific questions from the schools, letters of reference from individuals and from advisors or advisory committees. We want to know about, from people who know about them. Invitations to interviews. Uh, if you're invited to interview, you'll usually have two interviews. Uh, and that will be with a mixture of faculty, staff, and students, sometimes patients, patient representatives. Uh, and that's when uh, you know, interview, you, you, you can make stuff up to some degree when you write stuff. It's very hard to make stuff up when you're being interviewed. Because people will look at you with great care as you're talking. They can work out whether you mean what you say. And then the committee uh, deliberates. Uh, and I've worked on those committees. I know the, the people on them are very dedicated. It's a very hard process. Uh, but they have the job of making discriminating decisions. But discriminating about whether you'll be a good doctor. That's the choice that they make. And I, I reassure you that no discrimination against people on the basis of race, race or ethnicity. Every effort to have as diverse a as possible in the law. Among the selection criteria, this slide shows um, academic record, obviously. We want you to be capable and bright. But the selection process is broad enough that you will not be squeezed out by those horrible people who get the uh, 5.2 GPA on the thing where the maximum had been to be four. Uh, the process is sufficiently broad that if you're bright and capable, you don't have to be a roaring genius to do it. You just have to be smart and be able to apply this. And, and in fact, medical schools will turn down some more geniuses sometimes and say, go off and be a nuclear physicist, you know, we need you there. Uh, we need people who can care for patients. And so we're looking for that. Extracurricular activities give us a clue uh, to the breadth of your background. What else do you do with your life? Uh, studying is important. What else do you do? We want to know. Have you got clinical experience? Have you worked in a clinical setting? Are you comfortable there? Did you do well there? Were you horrified by the whole business? Decided to change career, okay. Change career. Uh, are you comfortable in that city? Have you given service to others? Because most medicine and most healthcare is about looking after other people. There was a point in the 1960s and 70s where it used to be about getting rich. Uh, I don't think that's so anymore. You can make it comfortable with being in healthcare. If you want to get rich, there's much better ways to get rich. If you want to care for people, this is a place to be. So we want to see about that service to others. Research experience is useful because particularly in UC, we're interested in people who have uh, the capacity to contribute to the advance of healthcare in the broadest sense. And so spending some time in a research lab is actually quite a smart thing to do. Look at whether you're comfortable there and you this next one, distance travel. You might not be able to read the smaller print. Your achievements relative to the available opportunities. And if you come from a background where there weren't many opportunities, and you've overcome those and come a long way, then that is taken seriously. And I know many doctors who've been educated through UC, and in my field, many dentists, who came from quite disadvantaged backgrounds and who got to a point where they could be admitted. And the prediction was that they would then go ahead in leaps and bounds because they had overcome disadvantage. And that prediction was right. So we take that very seriously. This is Where did you start? Uh, and, and how far have you come? And then you, obviously, your personal qualities. Uh, motivation, passion, maturity. Uh, and and uh, do you tell the truth during the interview? 
Okay, thousands of applications are submitted annually, obviously, uh, and, and the schools have committee structures that work on those applications. Uh, often committees work in parallel, uh, so that there's not just one decision making, and then results are compared. And when two groups come to the same conclusion about somebody or other, yes, okay, that works. If there's a difference, sometimes there'll be a third review, even a third interview. Uh, to, to, if, if, if two groups look at somebody quite differently, I'll say, come on, let's look at it again and work out why we disagree. And obviously, the investing staff to support that process. I mentioned before faculty members, both from the basic sciences, the clinical sciences, uh, and medical students and others, patient representatives very often. It's very hard work for the people who do it. They do it out of passion and commitment. They want excellent people in their profession. We want excellent people in the health professions for UC and for California. And we take that extremely seriously. Uh, the people who are dedicated to teaching really want to make sure that they get an excellent class, people who will be excellent doctors. This is not just something you do every day. It's something you care passionately about. And um, I get enormous satisfaction. Uh, initially, when I was a young man, I thought that I was going to be a dentist providing clinical care. I've done that in balance with other things for much of my career. But I realized fairly early on that I could care for more people by helping educate other people and doing research so that they could be cared for better. And I get great satisfaction from the people who come in and are educated and who become sometimes researchers sometimes clinicians. And there are many people like me in our schools and they populate the admissions committee. So these are people who are passionate about what they do in the same way that you are passionate about what you do. Okay, let's look at US uh, <coughs> applicant enrollment trends. I don't know if you can see the figures, but I'll read them out in case they are too small for you in the back of the room. Nearly 40,000 applications to US medical schools uh, in, in each year. And that's gone up. It's gone up 16% since 2002. So it's a nationwide trend that we are increasing the size of our schools, the number of our schools. So 40,000 applications for 17,500 positions. And that means some people don't make it. But it means that it's not by any means impossible. It's, it's a good thing. Sorry, that's applicants. That's people who try. So those Women making up nearly 50% of applicants, uh, and that's a wonderful trend because, uh, as you I'm sure are aware, uh, women make excellent healthcare providers. That wasn't the way it was 50 years ago, but it's certainly the way it is now. And that's a terrific thing. Um, and increasing diversity, always increasing diversity. Uh, African American students increased by 3.4%, Latino students by 18.6% just So we're increasing the diversity of our intake uh, in our medical classes. This one, um, uh, I'll, I'll talk through so you can understand it, the, the medical school enrollment trends by race and ethnicity. Um, about 50%, uh, uh, a little less than 50% uh, Caucasian, uh, and always shrinking a little bit as other groups be more successful. About 40% Asian, uh, of young Asian kids or Asian families are very dedicated students and do very well. But uh, African American, um, we're never happy about the, the low proportion of African American students in the population. We strive to increase it. It's staying fairly steady. Uh, Chicano, Latino, Mexican, better uh, with, with uh, Latinos, uh, and we're proud of that, but we need to continue to do much better. Some of our new programs are focused on Latino culture and language uh, to try and encourage more students to come to us rather than going elsewhere. Okay, um, we do have a multi-year plan in UC for growth, uh, and, and Dr. Nation has been pivotal in creating this program, which is called uh, the Prime Programs program in medical education at all five of our schools.